Hey folks, uh, here's a quick video on modifying the uh, quite a nice PZM AC power meters to read down to zero volts. Uh, the way I achieved it was by adding an external 5 volt DC power supply. So I'll walk through the mod uh, in there. So I've divided the video into three parts. In the first part, I discuss the pros and cons of a common approach used by uh, people to convert these units to read zero. Uh, the second part shows the approach I adopted by, is by actually inactivating the internal power supply and using an external DC supply, which avoids some problems with isolation of the input and output, the AC input and output. And the last uh, part of the video, I kind of give a quick overview of the very neat approach they've used to uh, to develop this power supply uh, unit. Hopefully this will be of help to other people who are using this meter. The meters are incredible value. For about uh, 10 to $20, you get an integrated meter that can read uh, current frequency, power factors, and the energy use, and of course can read voltage from 80 to 280 volts. And that's where the issue is. For a variable supply, you need to read down to zero volts instead of the minimum of about 80 volts. So others have faced the same challenge and the solution to get down to zero volts was simple as shown in some of the videos uh, that I've kind of just highlighted here. You separate the supply line that connects the capacitor dropper. So the capacitor dropper is shown as this yellow capacitor. So by Cutting, uh, I think, one of the line, and the videos provide more details, so I won't go into it. Uh, and then uh, adding an external uh, wire to a constant AC, so then you don't have to worry about variable AC on the input, because the constant AC would provide the voltage to keep this meter alive. So that's a pretty effective approach. Uh, which, uh, and I was, I thought, okay, you know, I could try it. So I bought the meter, I pop open the back and surprise, no yellow capacitor. Instead, there's a yellow transformer. And I searched on the web for some information on this kind of new power supply structure and was unable to find anything. So I, so I said, okay, let me try to figure out, you know, if there's a simple mod I could do to get to zero. I did some tracing of circuit connections with an ohm meter and of course visually to figure out, you know, the power supply circuit of, of this neat little unit here. One of the challenge was the other side of the board had the LCD panel soldered to it, which made tracing the circuits a bit difficult. But anyway, the very clear labels on the board helped quite a bit. So I uh, started uh, kind of doing that and I found out that almost half this board uh, is, is, is the power supply unit. And you can see it's a, it has a couple of ICs and, and diodes and, and of course the transformer. So quite a sophisticated AC to DC converter. Way better than the capacitor droppers which apparently they use in the earlier version. So after a bit of work, uh, I figured out the circuit diagram only of the power supply uh, 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 part of, of the whole thing. Uh, the AC voltage is connected to the two central connectors here. So this is AC in and one of the neutral, the middle neutral essentially forms the ground of the circuit. Um, so an approach, so I just want to kind of uh, uh, repeat the approach that others have used with the capacitive dropper. This could also be used here. So basically in that approach, you separate the input to these, this power supply by cutting the trace that connects R15 to the AC input. So if I can disconnect this to this, uh, then I basically, uh, I have uh, now independent of the AC in. So it can be whatever you want. Uh, and now I can connect a wire shown in this red line to an external stable AC voltage, as long as that's 80 to 240, then uh, this unit would be powered with a stable AC supply. So, so that was kind of one uh, potential solution uh, that that would be that. I think you'd have to be careful not to cut the link between R13 
and the AC line, so you see the AC and the R13. Because R13 and R12 are quite important as they are responsible for reading the voltage uh, that, that is seen on, on, on this terminal here. So for the PSM uh, V020V2 board that I got, the best place to cut was the trace that I'd highlighted with kind of green lines here. Sorry, the photo's not bad, but it's a bit more pronounced. And then solder a separate AC input to the R15 as shown here. So I would basically break this connection and then solder uh, external wire, the AC constant supply and that would feed this power and things would work. So the problem with this approach is, uh, I think the major problem is the second bullet that I've highlighted here. I would lose the isolation between the input and the output. I was thinking of using an isolation transformer which had an input of like 110 volts US voltage and an output of uh, 240 volts. So as I varied my variac from 0 to 110, I would get a 0 to 240 volt AC input. And I wanted the isolation for you know, safety and other reasons. But if I connected an AC in to feed the, the meter, to feed the power, the meter, uh, that would kind of defeat the purpose because the ground is also shared. So the ground would end up back here. So I would lose the isolation. I was also a bit concerned because if I'm generating a 240 volt AC output, then uh, I, I don't know whether that would have an issue because if the supply for the power supply is 110 and it's reading uh, like 2x the voltage in, whether there would be some challenges. So because of the isolation, I decided to kind of do uh, an isolated DC supply to feed this AC power meter. Which, which turned out to be simpler and more elegant than just plugging an AC uh, line in. So with this approach, I would disconnect the whole power supply uh, unit by removing the input that is diode D1 that you see here. And uh, once I uh, removed that, I would also remove the output connection and that is diode D2 on the right here. So when, if I remove those two diodes, I essentially isolate this whole supply. So there's no input, there's no output. So this electronics here becomes uh, non-functional. And then finally, I would just attach an external 5 volt DC from a, you know, a USB, you know, one of those many USB supplies uh, to the unit. And that should end up powering my meter. At least that was the idea. Uh, so I said, okay, let's just go ahead and do it. So uh, I started uh, by saying I would uh, remove the D2 diode in the left diagram here and then take on the D1 diode and I would just desolder and, and just uh, plug them out. So that would isolate the power supply. It's pretty simple. So a touch of the soldering iron and the D2 diode uh, came off. Uh, so I took up one end and then the other and then uh, left just blank. I did nothing with it. Uh, then did the same with the D1 diode, which connects to the AC input, uh, removed one end and then the other, leaving that blank. And, and then finally, I soldered a positive and negative lead, positive on the left here, the black wire, to the capacitor. This is a 16 volt capacitor, which, uh, which connects to, uh, I think it's a linear regulator. It is a linear regulator which converts the 5 volt to a 3 volt output that you just about see here. So once I had that done in, I just use a bit of uh, heat shrink for insulation and to you know mechanically support the wire, as you see here. Uh, the the diodes that I removed, I decided to kind of glue them to the to an empty spot on the board just in case, right? If I wanted to reverse the mod in the future. The diodes are there, so that was it. Now this is the moment of truth, right? So uh, getting pretty arrogant here, that's so why this approach would work. So I connected the black and the white wire that I'd soldered across the capacitor to my homemade ATX power supply. So I hooked it up to the five and the zero volt, 
and here's the moment of truth so turn the power supply on and then hooked up the crocodile clip to the uh, to the wires that are soldered in the thing at least comes on and yep it settles to zero volts uh, there's no ac connected that's why the frequency is kind of oscillating a bit on the readout so it worked quite relieved and uh, and other thing so the last part of the video i thought i'd just quickly go over the circuit diagram that i traced uh, from the pzm 020 hopefully useful to a few folks so there's a small value resistor that forms a current sensor yes it is a one milliohm resistor not uh, there's no typo there the voltage uh, is sensed by a voltage a, a divider which is a one meg ohm and a, and a 750 ohm uh, see uh, i guess voltage divider so that would essentially drop a 100 volt vo uh, ac volt to 75 millivolt at this output which is somehow sensed by the main circuit uh, later on and these R13 and R12, which form the voltage divider, are located safely on the other side of this uh, terminal, of the input terminal. So I didn't have to worry about messing it. And I made sure that uh, if people were kind of cutting traces here, it wouldn't impact here. So uh, if I cut the trace here, you have it, it wouldn't kind of change the voltage here. The... the the R15 resistor was kind of interesting. It's labeled R15, but I don't know what it is. But my best guess is it's a resettable fuse because an ohm meter across the R15 showed close to a zero ohms. So, so I think it is quite. <laughs> I think it is a fuse, but I have no way to confirm that. Uh, then uh, the half wave uh, DC voltage that comes out at the end of D1, the M7 diode, then goes to a DP2525 chip. Never heard of this chip before. Through a transformer, just shown through the red trace here. And that the chip, with, by with some magic, converts the incoming voltage to approximately 5 volt output at D2, at the outside, or the output of D2. Uh, I've just labeled, you know, what the pins mean. Uh, so the ground is pin eight, the high voltage from the diode ends up at pin six and five of the 2525 chip. There's an input current sense at uh, pin four. Uh, two and three is some uh, constant current, constant voltage feedback, which I think is built around the R18, R19. I wasn't too sure about the, uh, the voltage for the chip, the VDD. I've kind of left that blank. I think I'll figure it out later. So uh, looked online and the DP2525 chip uh, seems pretty interesting. Uh, I've just captured the verbiage used on the data sheet. So the primary side regulation, pulse width uh, modulation, power switch, 800 volt input, etc., etc. So quite a sophisticated chip for uh, for for this device. Way, way, way better than the eight, uh, than the capacitor drop, uh, dropping circuits that we used before. I just captured the image from the uh, data sheet. It overlaps what I traced in the diagram, but there are some minor differences, but kind of irrelevant, I think, for what I was doing. And then the output of this, uh, the 5.4 volt, essentially goes to a renewal regulator, uh, which uh, is uh, 7133-1, uh, which produces a 3.3 volt output. Uh, so uh, that's kind of shown here. Uh, so you can see the output pin is here. The input comes from the diode, a 5.5 volt input, and this is the ground pin. So by removing the diode, I essentially isolated the input to the linear regulator. And this and then and this linear regulator connects to the diode too. So by by replacing this 5.5 with an external 5.5 that I hooked up here and to the ground, I could kind of achieve that thing. Hopefully, this helps people who are trying to use this very nice meter. Thanks for watching.